Hey, what's up everyone? It's Griffin here. And based on macroeconomic indicators, the likelihood of a financial recession happening over the course of the next 12 months or so has definitely been increasing with the American stock market bouncing in and out of what's considered to be a bear market down over 20% now from recent highs, which translates over to the worst performing first half of the year in over five decades. Now, what's interesting is that during the height of the stock market euphoria that we experienced at the tail end of last year, well, the S&P 500 that's now heavily weighted towards technology stocks reached a whopping 38x price to earnings ratio, which obviously is extremely alarming, but has since sold off significantly combined with higher average company earnings leveling back down to a more reasonable value, although still quite high, which realistically does still leave some room to continue falling if we do especially continue going into a financial recession. So let's get into the first exchange rate fund for today's video. And thanks to Neil for sponsoring today's video. More on them later. So in today's video, we'll be covering covering five quality exchange traded funds, ETFs for short, that can complement any stock market portfolio really at any moment. But if we do continue moving into a recession, which translates over into the market value of these assets specifically continuing to drop, well, this could very well be another opportune moment to pick up more shares for a long-term multi-year hold, decades really. All right, so starting with the first ETF, speaking about a financial recession, well, of course, this means overall financial contraction of the economy. And even though the stock market isn't, well, the economy, in the US, there are over 4,000 public companies that trade on exchanges ranging from micro cap stocks all the way up to mega cap stocks like Apple, uh, Microsoft, and so forth, right? And so for this reason, an ETF like VTI would of course be subject to market fluctuations in the event of a financial recession. VTI is an ETF offered by Vanguard Investments and happens to be the US total stock market index ETF, meaning that it has thousands of positions, 4,112 to be exact. Uh, and this exposes you to all sectors of the American economy in a much more diverse blend of companies of all sizes, which gives a better read of the entire stock market than say the S&P 500, which really just focuses on the 500 largest and most influential companies within the US stock market. Now, what's great about a passive exchange trade fund like VTI is its rock bottom management expense ratio or MER for short at 0.03%, which when you're comparing that to the one or 1.5% 1 fee that any type of active fund or manager would charge. This means an extremely minimal cost to own this ETF, right? And there's no really better way to buy the market than with a total US stock market fund, which Warren Buffett famously has said uh, is one of the best options for a retail investor over the long term rather than actively trying to buy and sell positions. Now, in regards to average returns that VTI has produced for investors over the past couple of decades since inception of the fund in 2001, VTI has returned an average of 8% annual really that typical expected return that you can expect from the stock market. And that's even taking into account the two past recessions, right? The 2008 recession, as well as the 2020 recession. There's no denying the massive level of fear currently in the stock market, but an economy that continues to provide value and innovate is undoubtedly going to continue thriving over the next couple of decades. Uh, setbacks like these are to be expected, especially after you know a 10 year bull run. This is completely to be expected. But if again, you're maintaining that long-term approach, approach here, buying positions that are down 20, 30, 40% is going to be a fantastic way to create a lot of wealth over the coming decades. Okay, so above a total US stock market ETF alone, well, another interesting option for a core ETF holding to snatch up during a recession could be quite simply the S&P 500, right? With an ETF such as VOO in the United States or VFV here in Canada. And these are both options that are offered by Vanguard Investments. I personally hold both of these ETFs in my various different stock market portfolios, but similarly to with the VTI ETF, well, the S&P 500 is just a really passive and easy way that you can continue buying into, in this case, the 500 largest and most influential companies that trade in the American stock market, right? So over the past couple of decades, though, this has become quite heavily weighted towards technology companies. So companies that we all know, such as Apple, Tesla, Google, Microsoft, and so forth. Uh, and for this reason, over this past couple of decade span here, well, the average annual price to earnings ratio that we see with the S&P 500 has definitely increased, but you're still gaining exposure with an ETF like this one uh, to most large industries as well, including tech, industrials, medical, consumer staples, and so on. Now, the beauty here with a passive exchange rate fund like VOO that tracks the S&P 500 is that as the relative weighting of each one of these 500 companies is shifting in the market, well, this is reflected over into your investment as well. So just holding on to an ETF like this one 
over the long term is going to continue exposing uh, your portfolio to, again, the 500 largest companies without having to do anything on your part, right? If a company drops off the list, that's going to be automatically reflected in your portfolio in that one holding. So yeah, in regards to VOO specifically, you're looking at over 500 holdings here, around 504 holdings right now, uh, as well as rock bottom management expense ratios as well at 0.03%. Uh, and even a slight dividend yield in this case at 1.45%, which is actually somewhat decent considering it's not a dividend focused ETF. Now, of course, as with the rest of the American stock market, VOO is down quite significantly year to date at a down 12%, but that's honestly to be expected in a market environment such as this one following three unbelievable years in the multi double digit growth levels. Uh, and currently we're now in an official bear market territory down over 20% from recent highs. What's crazy about the S&P 500 and people consistently seem to underestimate this reality is that since 1993, so over the past 30 years, uh, considering the 2020 recession, 2008 recession, as well as the dot-com bubble, the average annual return of the S&P 500 has been 10.10%. That is nothing short of fantastic considering it's a passive, super low cost fund to hold. Uh, and that is significantly higher than most active investors. Bottom line, do not underestimate an S&P 500 ETF like VOO or VIV to consistently dollar cost average into even during recessions, right? It's hard to wrap your head around this reality because it pretty much goes completely against human psychology. But when the markets are down multiple double digits, this is when there is the most opportune upside over a long enough hold, right? You need to really just identify your risk tolerance and how long you're looking to invest in the markets in the first place. Oh, and just one last tidbit of information here about the S&P 500. According to Wells Fargo, between 1991 and 2020, missing only the 30 best days for S&P 500 returns would result in average annual returns of only 2.37% rather than 8.54%, meaning staying invested and taking advantage of recessions really just is the best course of action here. Let's now take a quick second to speak about today's video sponsor, Neo Financial. I think it's pretty safe to say that everyone watching this, including myself right now, we're all feeling the upwards pressure of inflation, right? That let's remember is currently at multi-decade highs. And so that's why in today's video, I partnered up with Neo Financial because they offer cash back at over 7,000 partnered merchants across Canada. The Neo card is an everyday credit card that rewards your daily spending. So with no annual fees, you can earn an average of 5% cash back at local and international Neo partners and businesses, including most major gas and grocery stores, restaurants, gyms, coffee shops, and many more. And what's really great about the Neo card is that you get all of that cash back and those other rewards, but it is completely free to use. So there's no annual fees, no over limit fees, as well as any inactivity fees whatsoever. If you're interested in getting higher cash back, this summer on your purchases and make sure to check out the Neo card. You can use the top link down below in the description to sign up. And if you do sign up with that link, you'll also get a $50 bonus simply for signing up to Neo Financial. Once again, make sure to check out Neo down below, top link in the description. And thank you to Neo Financial for sponsoring that portion of today's video. It's truly through opportunities like these that I can continue making all this quality content for you to enjoy. Let's get back to the video. So back to the video and ETF number three here as a sort of buy in and hold forever ETF. We have the first dividend exchange trade fund here that I spoke about in a recent video going over everything you need to know about dividend investing, but that is the Invesco high dividend low volatility ETF, ticker symbol SPHD. And unlike the two previous ETFs that we just looked over, uh, SPHD has not been selling off. Rather, it's been appreciating since around the 2020 lows, as we can see from this stock chart. Now, the reason why this ETF could potentially be a good option is due to its lower levels of volatility, steady appreciation over time, and consistently higher levels of dividend income. And really, all of this is achievable in the first place due to its holdings of strong and steady companies spread out across multiple industries such as utilities, consumer staples, healthcare, real estate, as well as energy. Right, All of these industries are known to have companies that have higher dividend payouts, all of which combined create a dividend yield for SPHD ETF of 3.74%, which is actually quite high 
especially considering the fact that this is coupled with consistent appreciation over time. So, you know, especially if you're younger, right, in your 20s or 30s, it's great to have exposure to higher volatility stocks and growth stocks for that longer term growth because you're able to weather through many different market cycles. But when it comes to a lower volatility ETF like SPHD, this can also be great to have in your portfolio, maybe as a more complementary position in order to still get some exposure to dividend positions, get that dividend income coming in quite consistently, and also benefiting from consistent long-term appreciation, even though it might be lower on an average annual basis. And finally, the management expense ratio for SPHD is also rock bottom at 0.03%. So, you know, you're not getting wrecked on higher fees as with some of these other higher dividend ETFs. Moving on in the dividend ETF category, we've got the Vanguard High Dividend ETF, ticker symbol VYM. And this is also a passively managed ETF that tracks an underlying index. Of course, passively managed ETF also means much lower management expense ratios for VYM. Uh, in this case, we're looking at 0.06%, so also extremely low here. And unlike the last dividend ETF that we just looked over, uh, this ETF has over 440 holdings, all of which are American equities uh, that have higher than average dividend yields. Uh, and that's excluding REITs in this case. So this is not taken into account real estate investment trusts, which do actually tend to have higher than average dividend yields as well. I almost forgot, but I wanted to mention the fact that SPHD only has around 50 holdings, meaning a much smaller subset of the American stock market, because again, these are companies that have higher than average dividend yields while also providing much lower volatility. So yeah, only around uh, 50 equities in this ETF. VYM's investment goal is to invest in a diverse set of large cap value positions. So companies that are in the large cap category, but also showing signs of value relative to the rest of the market, right? And so this uh, allows for higher levels of dividend income and also more stability over time. So when it comes to an ETF like VYM though, top companies include, for example, Johnson & Johnson, Procter & Gamble, Exxon Mobil, JP Morgan. All of these are massive companies that have several decade long dividend streaks. Keep in mind, this isn't necessarily the case for every single individual dividend stock held within VYM. However, it is the reason why just the sheer volume of dividend stocks all combined provide more stability and consistent dividend income with an ETF like this one, uh, because really all of the different dividend yields are balancing themselves out within this fund. So some of the top sectors in which VYM holds dividend stocks include financials, healthcare, and consumer staples, all of which do tend to perform better than the general market during a recession, right? Keep that in mind. And this is as a result of continued demand for these companies' products. And that's why even now, as the general market is down over 20%, VYM is still feeling the effects of bearish market sentiment, but remains down only around in the 10% range. Finally, the current dividend yield for VYM is sitting at 2.72%. And over the past 15 years since inception of this ETF in 2006, uh, we're looking at average annual returns of just above 8.5%. So very nice returns considering uh, the dividend income and lower levels of volatility as well than the general market. Again, if I didn't make this clear enough in the first half of the video, I cannot stress this enough. When the market is bleeding, everyone's panicking and looking to exit the market, this is the best time to actually take action and deploy capital into the market, buying assets at a discount for that longer term growth. Keep in mind, if you're looking to you know day trade and you're looking to swing trade positions within a month or two, this is not the type of strategy that I'm talking about. I'm talking being an investor in positions, being uh, you know stocks, exchange traded funds, and other asset classes like real estate. When values are going down, this is the best time to actually take action for that long-term growth because you're buying assets at a discount relative to what they were before. And finally, the last ETF we're gonna be speaking about in today's video is certainly not going to be a popular one right now, right? In fact, I can already see people down in the comments commenting, Griffin, why would you recommend uh, holding on to and keeping an eye on an ETF like this one, throw everything into energy, right? Well, of course, I'm speaking about the Invesco NASDAQ 100 ETF, ticker symbol QQQ, which if you've been following my channel for a while, you would know that I am a big fan 
of the NASDAQ 100 and ETFs such as QQ that track this underlying market index. In fact, it's one of my favorite core ETF holdings in my growth portfolios. So the QQQ ETF is composed, of course, of the top 100 companies that trade on the NASDAQ stock exchange, which obviously is now highly weighted towards the technology sector. And this is one of the main reasons why it has been shedding off trillions of dollars in market value over the past six months or so. Uh, in fact, as we speak right now, it is down over 30% uh, from all-time highs, from market highs in recent history, which very well puts it into bear market territory. So with this in mind, you're probably wondering why I would continue speaking about an ETF like this one, keeping an eye on it, and also looking to buy more shares of this ETF, considering the fact that we're on the verge of a recession. But to me, that is really simple. I am not a day trader or a speculator. Again, I'm looking to use my businesses, such as my real estate, as well as uh, my YouTube channel and a couple other ventures in order to fund my investment portfolio, such as investing in the stock market for the next 20, 30, 40 years and using that to grow my wealth over time, right? I'm not looking to time the market. I'm not looking to day trade, speculate and so forth. I'm looking to use the markets to grow my wealth over time. And to me, at least in my opinion, technology is getting a huge beating right now because it was uh, able to run so much and increase in relative valuation. But tech is where the future still remains. And that is where we're going to continue seeing massive levels of growth and advancement in our society over the next several decades. That to me is an absolute no brainer. You may disagree, but I'm in full conviction here that technology is where we're going to continue being able to advance as a society, create more value and productive output. The reason why we're at where we are right now uh, versus 20, 30 years ago is because of the increased scale at which technology allows us to grow as a population and as really just human civilization. And so uh, the technology sector of the largest market in the entire world is only going to continue growing at an increased pace. At least that's my take on things. And so a couple of months back, I made a video though, speaking about the likelihood of a recession in 2022. Well, here we are, right? We're in the midst of this right now. Uh, and this is all as a result of the stimulus packages, massive amounts of capital injected into the market, as well as low interest rates. Both of these combined created massive levels of value appreciation. And so relative PE ratios were definitely out of whack and the likelihood of a recession were pretty high. So again, here we are, but instead of taking advantage of this opportunity and maintaining conviction for the long-term growth of the economy and the stock market, we're seeing millions of retail investors just fleeing instead of deploying capital and taking advantage of an opportunity. As it stands right now, QQQ has over 50% of its weighting towards the technology sector, which actually happens to be down from around the 60% range due to tech shedding off so much value and really just taking a beating. Following that, we have consumer discretionary and telecommunications. Now, of course, the dividend yield is much lower uh, at below 1%. And this is because growth companies and tech companies tend to try and reinvest as much of their earnings back into future growth as well as research and development. So even considering the fact that the technology sector as a whole is down so significantly, and that's really what's pulling the S&P 500 down as a whole, but also the NASDAQ 100 even more because of its higher weighting towards the technology sector. This is pretty normal when we look at it from a historical standpoint. Comparing the NASDAQ's returns versus uh, the S&P 500's return, despite higher levels of volatility of the technology sector, over time, the NASDAQ actually tends to perform better on an average annual basis than the S&P 500, uh, really because of, again, that technology sector exposure, which tends to commend higher price to earnings values. All of this to say right now, my QQQ positions are still in the green due to the fact that I've been dollar cost averaging into this ETF over the past three, four years, really. Uh, and I was taking full advantage during the 2020 recession. That being said, from all time high values, of course, I'm down quite a bit, but this really does not phase me because again, I believe technology is where the future value output and growth as a society lies. And so I continue maintaining high conviction in an ETF like this one. And I'm going to continue dollar cost averaging into QQQ for literally years to come. With all that said, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure to drop a like. It really helps my channel out. Also consider subscribing, hitting the bell button to be notified of new and upcoming stock market, personal finance, as well as real estate content. Thanks again to Neo Financial for sponsoring today's video. And by the way, also, if you want to learn more about stock market investing, I'd highly recommend you check out my full stock market investing course that you can check out completely for free. It used to be around 200 bucks, but I put it up for free on Skillshare. You can access
access over seven and a half hours of video lectures all for free on a one month trial. So check that out. Also link down and below in the description. And with all that said, have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one.